Hi, in this lecture I'll show you how to send dummy sensor data to dweed.io. Just an example of how you can use the host HTTP request to send data from your ESP32 to pretty much any web resource that can receive data via a post HTTP request. So the sketch that I have prepared is this one here. It depends on its own credentials file, which you can see here. It's the same file that I showed you in the previous lecture, but in this case, I've added one more key value pair called thing. I'll talk about thing in a moment. It's a term used in dweet.io. It's just um, a text value, a string value that I've stored here. And its file name is in square brackets in the tab, which means that it's already uploaded onto my ESP32. You can see it uh, right here. All right, now back to the script. Uh, this script uses the same components as the one that uh, you learned about in the previous lecture. So that is the network and your requests and your JSON. I'm also importing random because I haven't got a actual sensor connected to my ESP32. So I'll be simulating sensor data with random values. Before we have a look at the details here, let's go to dweet.io and have a look at that first. So dweet.io is a very simple service uh, which operates as a Twitter equivalent, but for machines. So Twitter is a service where you can send small messages, about a couple of hundred characters at most, and imagine something similar for machines, where a machine will be able to send a quick message to a Dweet thing, which is an endpoint, a particular URL called a thing, and then other people will be able to access that same URL and read the data that uh, the, the posting machine has posted. So uh, if you go to dweet.io and then click on the play button, this is uh, basically a single page tutorial on how to use Dweet. I want to concentrate on this segment of this tutorial first. So see here, uh, there's an example of how to make a post. So the URL here is Dweet4 thing is a name for your machine, uh, the, the thing that your machine is tweeting about, and it's a unique name across the Dweet network. So you find a unique name for your thing. In my case, I called that uPython. And therefore, the full URL to which you want to post or your machine will post is uh, this, this one here. I've got the example dweet.io at 443. So I'm using SSL here. Uh, dweet for, and then the name of the thing. In my case, I'm going to extract that from the credentials file, which is going to be EU Python. So if I put, say, EU Python here, this is just an, an example using the tutorial form. Um, the key, I'm going to leave it as blank. So the wheat allows you to purchase keys that allow you to create posts to things that are private. So only another machine with the appropriate key will be able to read the posts that you've made. Uh, I'm going to not use the key here and therefore my tweets are going to be public. And for the content, uh, we need to use JSON for the content here. Let's keep something very simple. I'm going to go and grab this content here, something I did earlier and paste it right there and tweet you get back the response uh, that this has been has been a successful tweet and uh, this is the response that comes back now if i want to get this tweet imagine that i've set another esp32 somewhere else that will be able to receive data from my other remote esp32 all i need to do is to point the recipient ESP32 to this URL with this thing name and make a GET request. You see here it says GET. So do a GET request here and there's the data. So dweet.io provides a very simple intermediary between machines. Uh, you could have one machine making a post and you could have 
many machines reading from the post, just like you've got with Twitter, you've got one person making a tweet and potentially millions of people receiving that tweet in their Twitter feed. So let's do all this programmatically now. So I'm using the same construct here to open up the credentials file and uh, get the credentials for the Wi-Fi network and for the tweet thing that I'll be using. I've got my headers here. So I need to indicate to tweet, which is the recipient that um, I'll be sending a JSON body content type. So I'm doing that with the headers variable. I'm going to be using the headers variable down here when I make my post request. So let's continue. I've got the URL for the tweet. So this is the, the base URL plus the thing name, which I'm extracting from the tweet's credentials file. And I've got the exact same uh, do connect method as in the previous lectures example. Uh, I create the WLAN object, uh, call the do connect method to make the connection happen. So as long as I have a connection, then print out the uh, address, the acquired IP address. Now, in, in this example, I chose to use a timer instead of an infinite loop. And I've set the timer to send out a new tweet every five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. So when the five seconds expire, uh, the hardware timer is going to call the post to tweet ISR, which jumps the execution of the program up here. So first, I uh, get a couple of random values for the temperature and the humidity. I create my JSON object like this. So temp is a random temperature and humidity or hum is a random humidity. Then in line 89, I make my post request. There's the post verb. I'm passing on the URL variable and then the headers variable that I created earlier. And of course the data. Now the data, remember that this is a JSON object. Uh, I'm going to use the dumps command to create the JSON object out of the data variable. Next in line 90, I get the response from dweet.io and I'm using the loads method of the JSON module to convert that into a valid JSON document which uh, I store in the tweet back variable. And after that, I'm using these constructs here to extract the individual bits of information from the JSON object that tweet.io has returned. In the first line, 91, I just print out the entire object. But after that, lines 92 and onwards, I'm a bit more selective. And in this case, for example, I am grabbing the variable stored, uh, let's go back to the response body here, this. So you can see the structure. I'm looking for the width value right here, which itself contains another JSON document embedded. Inside that embedded JSON document, I'm looking for the created key, which is right here. So I'm passing that as well. And then this whole construct together, the two keys right after one after the other gives me the time and date when this tweet was captured by tweet.io. I'm doing the same thing with a few others. Let's have a look at, for example, the, um, the humidity. If you want to get the humidity value from the response body, which you can see it right here, the name of its key is hum, which is contained inside content, which is contained inside with so that's why you see this construct here in line 96. All right, so let's try it out uh, and see if it actually works. Uh, this tab indicates that the script right now is on my file system, which is okay. Uh, it will still work when I upload it to the ESP32. And I've got my credentials file already uploaded to the ESP32 flash file system. So I'm just going to click on run current script. Uh, first time didn't work. Second time didn't work. Let's try again. Okay. Third time did. <laughs> I'm not sure why there is um, a failure in the first couple of attempts, uh, but it's okay. Right. So the third one worked. You can see that every five seconds, I'm getting a, a tweet posted to tweet.io. The response comes back and um, it 
provides me with a response object in its entirety and then decomposed individual components of that response. So let's see. I'm just going to have a look at the get request here on the tweet.io play page. I already have the upython thing named inside the field. I'm just going to click on try out and get the latest values. All right, so you can see, let's try that again. 2328, just want to see if this matches. Yeah, 34, 3029, there you go, 34, 29 is right, we are right here. Let's do one more, try it out. 60 and 40, which are second last values posted. All right, so you can see that whatever my device is posting, uh, anyone else that is doing a get request to this URL will be able to get. So I'm just going to go to a new tab and post that in there. And you can see that this is a raw value or the raw tweet that my ESP32 has just posted. I can just hit refresh and get the very latest each time. Let's do one more. There we go. All right, so this works. Um, and that concludes this demonstration. Uh, just in summary, you can say that tweet.io provides a very simple way, as I said, to connect devices together via a Twitter-like mechanism. All you need to do is to do one get request to receive data or one post request to send data from your ESP32 and you've got these two devices connected. Okay, now let's move on to the next lecture where I'll show you how to use a post request to send a notification email via if this and that.